India's central bank RBI has raised key repo rate by 35 basis points. The global economy is still marred by profound shocks and unprecedented uncertainty. Mixed signals are emanating from geopolitical situation. Мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. War in Ukraine has caused food and fuel prices to rise, pushing up inflation. Based on an assessment of the macroeconomic situation and its outlook, the MPC decided by a majority to increase the policy repo rate by 35 basis points. Consumer price inflation would surpass 18% in January 2023. India also has suffered a hit to its economy thanks to high inflation and rising interest rates. Hi everybody. Ever since the Russia Ukraine war has started, inflation in India has gone over the roof and has even touched 6%. And while most of us might think of inflation to be yet another boring topic, I want you to have a look at this graph. This is a graph that Mohak Mangal had put out at Soch, whereby you will see that whenever inflation increases by 10%, the ruling party of the country itself changes. So first of all, inflation is so powerful that it can topple the government itself. And secondly, for people like you and me, whenever inflation increases, the RBI increases something called the repo rate, and this repo rate increase directly increases your home loan EMI. For example, if you look at this chart, in August after RBI increased the repo rate, if your bank's increased your interest rate from 6 to 8 percent per annum, if you took out a 50 lakh loan over a 20 year tenure, your EMI would increase by 11.3 percent from 37,570 rupees to 41,820 rupees. And by 15.4 percent to 43,391 rupees if the interest rates touch 8.5 percent. So when this happens for millions of businesses and consumers all across the country, the entire Indian market itself goes topsy turvy. So if you're a student of business, economics, or even political science, this is by far one of the most important metrics that you need to study and keep track of. So in this episode today let's do a deep dive and try to understand how is inflation calculated what does RBI do to control inflation in 2022 why is RBI failing to curb inflation in India how does it affect ordinary people like you and me and most importantly what are the study materials to help you understand inflation and in Indian economics better To understand the macro view of the Indian economy and inflation, we first have to understand the basics of how inflation is calculated and what exactly does the RBI do to curb inflation in India. To put that straight, inflation can be measured with something called consumer price index. For those who don't know, consumer price index is basically an index that takes prices of a specific basket of goods and services and quantifies the delta of the prices with a base year. Now I know this is complicated, so let's take an oversimplified example to understand CPI. Let's say the CPI basket consists of three commodities: rice, wheat, and petrol. And in 2015, rice costed 30 rupees a kg, wheat costed 50 rupees a kg, and petrol costed 100 rupees a liter. So in total, they stand at 180 rupees. And now, fast forward to five years later, let's say the same commodities: rice, wheat, and petrol cost 36 rupees, 48 rupees, and 110 rupees each. So now, the same commodities put together cost 190 rupees. So considering the base year to be 2015, the CPI in 2020 is 194 divided by 180 into 100, which is 107.77. So inflation rate between 2015 and 2020 is 7.7 percent. This is how the inflation is calculated using CPI. And in the real world, this CPI basket consists of 299 goods and services from eight different categories, which are education, communication, transportation, recreation, clothes, foods and beverages, housing, and even medical care. This data is collected by the National Statistics Office or NSO from 1,181 village markets and 1,114 urban markets distributed over 310 towns and cities of the country, and then eventually using a tedious procedure, this CPI is calculated. And using the consumer price index, you can interpret four economic indicators of a particular country. Number one is the cost of living of a particular country and how it is increasing. Number two is the purchase power of the consumers. Number three is the expensiveness of different goods and services. And lastly, you can also assess the value and change in value of that currency. And now, if you look at how the CPI in India has increased, you will see that as of December 2021 and Jan 2022, the CPI was at 165.1. But as soon as the Russia-Ukraine war started in February 2022, suddenly there was a spike in CPI. And in November 2022, it stood at 176.5. And why is that? Because when Russia-Ukraine war happened, the cost of wheat, sunflower, and fuel shot up. Because Ukraine alone accounts for 10% of the world's wheat market, 15% of the corn market, 13% of the barley market, and 50% of the entire world's sunflower oil market. 
Similarly, Russia exported 23% of the entire world's sunflower oil. Russia is the third largest steel exporter and the second largest producer of oil. So after the war, when the world faced massive shortages of all these commodities, their prices spiked, eventually causing inflation not just in India, but all across the world. And you must have seen this already in the news. The war in Ukraine pushed up commodity prices globally. The war in Ukraine has caused food and fuel prices to rise, pushing up inflation even further. US now where inflation is rocking American consumers at levels not experienced in over 40 years. Inflation in the countries that use the euro has hit a record high. India also has suffered a hit to its economy thanks to high inflation and rising interest rate. Inflation will now be a top concern for many Americans. Consumer price inflation would surpass 18% in January 2023, rising prices of goods and commodity. Economies the world over are contracting, their economic forecasts are shrinking. This is the importance of geopolitics in your life, your business and your country's economy. Now the question over here is, if inflation is increasing due to the Russia-Ukraine war, what can RBI do to curb inflation in India? Well, this is where we have something called the repo rate hike. Capping its fifth hike this year, also the lowest in the rate hike cycle, Governor Shakti Kanta Das said that inflation is expected to moderate, but the battle against inflation is not over. The MPC decided by a majority of five members out of six to increase the policy repo rate by 35 basis points to 6.25 percent with immediate effect. The Reserve Bank of India has now raised the key lending rates which are known as the repo rate. RBI has raised key repo rate. The war in Europe is lingering and we are facing newer challenges each passing day. To tell you about it, just like banks lend money to companies, the Reserve Bank of India lends money to the commercial banks and charges them an interest. And then, these commercial banks give loans to common people in the form of home loans, car loans, etc. And this interest rate that RBI charges to the commercial banks is what you call as repo rate. And in exchange for these loans, the commercial banks are required to deposit securities such as government bonds or treasury bills as collateral. So HDFC might deposit securities with RBI and get a loan at 6.15% and then give Parsh a loan of 80 lakhs at 8.15% interest. And this delta of 2% is what makes HDFC's profit. But if RBI raises this interest rate from 6.15 to 6.25%, then even HDFC will have to increase the home loan interest from 8.15 to 8.35% to make a profit. And here's where two types of home loans come in. Fixed interest home loans and floating interest home loans. Now in the fixed interest loans format, if you and the bank come to an agreement at 8.5% interest, then regardless of what happens, you will be charged a fixed interest rate of 8.5% only. But in the floating interest rate format, if the RBI increases the repo rate from 6.15 to 6.25%, then even HDFC can increase the interest rate from 8.35 to 8.55%. And then you will have to pay EMI according to the new interest rates. And if you look at the impact of this move on your home loans and on the economy of the country, it's very, very significant. So let's try to understand this. Let's say Mr. Joshi has taken out a loan of 30 lakh rupees on a 20 year tenure and makes 80,000 rupees per month as his salary. So if the interest rate goes up from 7% in April 2022 to 9.25% in January 23, the EMI would go up from 23,250 rupees to 27,387 rupees to repay the loan within the original tenure. And this is an EMI increase of 17.75%. So let's say Mr. Joshi's effective savings after all the expenses is about 15,000 rupees. But now, after the increase in interest rates, Mr. Joshi would only have 10,871 rupees to spend. And in total for the entire year, his purchase power will decrease by 4,129 rupees into 12 months, which is 49,548 rupees. So as you can imagine, in order to make up for this extra cost, the Joshi family will cut down on movie outings, dine outs and vacations. Similarly, when home loan interests are increased all across the country, millions of Indians will buy less movie tickets, spend less on clothes, spend less on vacations and in families where budget is very very tight, they might even have to cut down on groceries and food. Similarly, if a company takes out a loan of 5 crore rupees at a 9.75% interest to be paid over an 8 year tenure, then their EMI would be 7,52,110 rupees. But then, after the repo rate hike, if HDFC increases the interest rate to 12%, then the same company will have to pay 8,12,640 rupees per month, which is an extra 60,000 rupees per month and 7.2 lakhs extra per year. This means they will have to cut spending on ads, cut down employee perks like reimbursement, slow down on recruitment, and even cut down on buying and leasing new office spaces. 
So when thousands of corporations face the same crunch, the cost of commercial spaces will go down, the salary hikes to employees will be cut down and vendor negotiations will get tighter. So employees like Mr. Joshi will not just end up paying more EMI but might also not get salary hikes. So when thousands of organizations and people cut down on their spending, the demand for everything starting from basmati rice to refined oil to movie tickets to even automobile costs will either start falling or the cost will stop increasing rapidly. This is how RBI increasing repo rate directly helps them control the prices in the economy. Eventually, the inflation could be curbed. This is the reason why if you see, ever since the Russia-Ukraine war has started, as the inflation rate in India started increasing, RBI has very very calculatedly increased the repo rate. As you can see from this table, RBI has increased this repo rate for the fifth time in 2022. As a result, all the banks have hiked their home loan interest, which is directly affecting people like you, me and the corporations who have taken out loans. Now the question over here is, in spite of RBI increasing the repo rate, why is the inflation still increasing and why isn't the RBI not able to prevent inflation? And more importantly, as citizens of India, is it right for us to blame the government or RBI for inflation? Well, this is where you have to understand the basics of demand and supply. You see guys, when RBI increases the repo rate and decreases the purchase power of people like Mr. Joshi, what it is essentially doing is cutting down the demand of products like detergents, iPhones and restaurants. But the problem is that the price of these commodities is increasing not because there's a lot of demand, but because the cost of raw materials has increased drastically. For example, when it comes to FMCG products, palm oil makes up 2% of the cost of your detergents and your soaps. But when the Russia-Ukraine war happened, out of the 4 important oils in the market, which are sunflower, canola, soybean and palm oil, more than 80% of the sunflower oil stopped being traded because it came from Russia and Ukraine. Canola oil production went down because they had a bad season in Canada and same with soybean in Argentina. So when 3 major oils went off the market, the entire demand load came onto Indonesia and Malaysia because both of them put together supply 84% of the entire world's palm oil. So obviously, the Indonesian vendors started increasing the price of palm oil by 30, 40 and even 50%. As a result, the cost of producing soaps, detergents and even cosmetics increased. Eventually, the profit margins of FMCG companies went down and that pressurized these FMCG companies to increase their prices. Similarly, the cost of tomatoes is not increasing because there are a lot of tomato buyers but because the cost of fertilizers in the market has increased by 200% in the past two years because of both COVID and Russian invasion. And this is because Russia accounted for about 22% of the global exports of ammonia, 14% of the world's urea exports and about 14% of mono-ammonium phosphate. And since natural gas is needed for the production of fertilizers, the input cost of fertilizers had increased by 200% because of rising natural gas prices. And this is again because Russia is one of the biggest gas producers in the world. And lastly, the garment prices have increased because of oil and gas price hikes, cotton prices have increased by 40-60% to 60%, and then there is the zero covid policy in China and even the increase in shipping prices. So now the cost of t-shirts in the market is increasing from 300 to 500 rupees not because a lot of people are buying t-shirts but because the input cost of making these t-shirts has increased by a large large extent. So now that RBI has increased the repo rate, if people like Mr. Joshi have to cut down on the budget, they will stop buying t-shirts if it crosses 400 rupees. So the vendors might have to bring the price down to 400 rupees. But at the same time, the vendors cannot sell at below 420 rupees because they have to cover their debt, losses from the pandemic and also compensate for the increase in input cost due to cotton and oil price hikes. So you see, this way, the market is actually getting stuck. On one side, while the buyers don't have the money to buy these products, the sellers are forced to decrease the price due to lack of demand but at the same time, they cannot decrease their price after a certain extent because of both past losses and increase in input cost. So at the end of the day, both the stakeholders in the ecosystem are stuck with no money flowing into the market. And the same thing applies to all goods and services all across the world, including electronics, clothes, vegetables and even automobiles. Similarly, for the corporates, if RBI increases the repo rate when it comes to extremely interest sensitive businesses like construction, it's going to be very very difficult to grow or sometimes it might even be impossible to complete the existing projects. So if Mr. Joshi and others do not buy houses because of high interest and decrease in purchase power and the EMI increases for the construction company because of the repo rate increase, 
these construction companies won't be able to pay their vendors those vendors cannot pay their vendors and that will lead to incompletion of projects which will again not invite buyers if you don't sense this already this is what recession looks like this is how important and critical the role of rbi is in the economy of india and even a slight miscalculation here and there with this repo rate could slow down the economy of the country by a large large extent this is the reason why there are a lot of opposing arguments against rbi's repo rate hikes now whether this is good or bad whether rbi is doing the right thing or the wrong thing i don't know but the one thing i know for sure is that you have learned a wonderful concept in depth and you can understand the indian economics and your own investment portfolios better using these terminologies and the knowledge that you have gained and this is what brings me to the last part of the episode and that are the study materials to help you understand and explore indian economics better so only if you understand the depth of these concepts you will be able to protect your wealth from depletion due to inflation and by the way here's where our partners idfc first bank come in so let's take an example to understand this better let's say you have a monthly average of 20 lakh rupees in your bank account in most banks you would earn an interest of 3 to 3.5% that is around 60832 rupees whereas with idfc first bank savings account you would earn 6.25% per annum interest which would give you 1 lakh 2796 rupees that means you get 69% more earnings with an idfc first bank account but that's not it this interest is credited into your idfc first bank account every month compared to quarterly with other banks that means even your interest earnings will keep earning you 6.25% per annum interest each month and provide the boost of compounding effect to your savings in addition to that idfc first bank promises you a zero fee banking yes you heard that right with idfc first bank there are zero charges on 28 commonly used savings account services including waiving off of non home branch charges zero charges on atm withdrawals and more so if this sounds useful to you go ahead and open your idfc first bank account from the link in the description and you can know more about their customer friendly features using this link moving on to the study materials the first thing i'm attaching is a detailed doc on what is repo rate and how does it affect you Secondly, I am attaching a doc to help you understand how CPI is calculated. And lastly, I am attaching a mint article to help you understand why RBI is failing to curb inflation. And apart from that, if I find more docs, I'll attach them also. So do have a look at them and let me know what you think. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to support our work because this really helps the YouTube algorithm. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.